now we're getting it. And it's a way to get this this crowd going on this a sleepy Sunday morning. Um, and get this land finally underway. And certainly I think it's going to be an absolutely fantastic day. Certainly last year this was, you know, sort of really broke new ground in terms of what you can expect from this event. And hopefully this year should be even better. Ooh. Oh! <laughs> Martango like, with the knife round clutch. <laughs> it's like Martango takes down three to get the knife round. Uh, what do you think? Cambridge should maybe start, probably start CT. This map is still, with the AK changes, it's less CT sided, but yeah, they are going for CT. Um, getting his nerd speak out there as well, CT side clocks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think it's I think it's the right decision to go counter terrorists first. So here we go, we're finally getting into the pistol round of game one of today's CSGO best of three, and it's Cambridge starting on CT. And it looks like the buy is quite aggressive, quite... Yeah, quite aggressive actually from both sides. Four Kevlars, Antlion there. He's taken one for the team. He's bought all the nades. Yeah, they now, they really yeah. like their Kevlars this map, uh, yeah. this round. <laughs> but yeah, it doesn't matter when you're against Paramos like me because you know <laughs> headshots. Exactly, you can't buy that helmet in the first round. Um, in terms of a setup here, it's, it's pretty passive, but already we've got some contact from Doge, and Jalax, he's going to pick out Jerry across the map, and that's going to set up this Oxford push straight into the A site. Dobby's got to do big things here on Pit, but he gets absolutely swarmed by T's, and that's going to give them the site. And let's see how they can hunker down and, and capture this, because with five terrorists still alive, this retake shouldn't be possible. Looks like we have a very passive position from the terrorists at the moment, holding the site. I don't think the counter terrorist will break it. Yep. Yeah, next stage, actually, he's going to rip off a few kills for himself. Going to get a triple there, actually, against the against the retake. And only really Dal dropped below 30 points of HP. So, in terms of stopping another 14-1, maybe not the start. K Ridge might have wanted. Yeah. So we'll have to see what's going to come out. And of course, the second round force, which has been standard now for you know ages, really. Um, and it, actually, I think they're going to do pretty well because the Oxford side they've bought up SMGs. Yeah, there's a lot of SMGs have gone have gone quite greedy. And like I into the Kevlar, that's that's not going to do anything. I mean, there's a very split play from the uh, the Oxford side. Um, Especially Oxford, with the amount of money that they got from that round, not losing anybody um, and getting the bomb down, there should have been a, enough for at least one or two Galils. Yeah, that's that's right. But um, there might be a few pickoffs from the Cambridge side here. If the round could still go either way with this force against SMGs. Um, that SMG is kind of indicating that Oxford here are going to be looking for a run and gun strategy. And here comes the run and gun oh. collar, Martango. He's going to get a clip of him. But before he can do anything with that Deagle, he's going to get headshot straight away by Antline. Doge as well. He's going to tackle one on two. Go for it. He's caught out here on the rotate straight away because they go mid to beat. Harry M, he's going to pack in a few shots, get some good damage down actually to Glasses and Oxjevic who are pretty low, but now it's just Jerry with his 5-7 and a dream. Yeah, they just ran their way straight through Archers. I thought I thought Motangu would get a pick with that Deagle, but he missed the first shot and then... I think against a run and gun, you have to make that first shot or you're, you're just going to get swarmed. Yeah, exactly, and that's exactly what they did. And Oxford have come out here with a run and gun strat actually in both of their first two rounds, which isn't really the meta, you could say. <laughs> No, I think this is working quite well for Oxford. They they won that second round quite convincingly, and they still have their SMGs, and it'll just be six hundred dollars per kill. I'm gonna say the bank is absolutely crazy on these um, SM, apart from the Pro 90, of course, but the rest they've all got a, a, um, a bonus kill reward, so they figure to have money for years by the end of this round, unless they somehow cough it up. Uh, yeah, we have the we have a we have a big um, stack at B side from the Cambridge side, but. I don't think anything's going to really be achieved here. And you see Antline here, he's going to lead the troops on what looks to be another mid to B archers, but somehow they sniff it out. And they've actually caught out the CTs who stacked the B site with four players. And that's going to give them a free A site. And at this point, I think the CTs could possibly even just try and deny those $300 for the kills. Yeah. And go free here, Mike. Get a glimpse of glasses. They don't know. They're so close. Literally either side of that wall. Jerry, he's going to be encountered down there by the pillars, and he's not going to last long for this world. And in fact, the kills go across the map, and those unarmored P250s are paper thin against this run and gun SMG, like bullish tactic that Oxford have shown us this morning. Yeah, 
I would have hoped that Cambridge would have gotten a few pickoffs, but they just didn't, and the terrorists are very rich at the moment. So, range off last gun round, finally, some some real counter strike. But the money on Cambridge, look, I mean, there's no helmet on Gofri, which might be a problem for him if he comes across glasses. Only two smokes and a few flashes, you know. They can only smoke banana for the first minute of this round, possibly not even smoke mid at all. Um, um, that's really going to hurt them when the terrorists are likely to look for those longer range engagements at the AK as well. Yeah, the, the Cambridge side are really lacking grenades. I mean, they've got a few flashes and a few smokes, but that's about it. So, things looking pretty even Stevens here right now. We're just going to have two on B. Um, a few sitting towards A. It's like a fairly standard 2-3 split. Cambridge actually opting not to try and contest mid at all, so control of that is going to be seeded straight to the CTs. And Oxford are just kind of hoping that someone is going to lose their head and uh, cock up so that they can, get a, they can get a pick and do what they like with the round. But Cambridge, they're holding to their lines, they're being disciplined. Yeah, the, both teams are playing quite passive, but it looks like, looks like Oxford are wanting to set something up at mid here. Yeah, so Glasses, he's going to throw those nades into the B site, so they have no idea that this is coming. But Dobby, he's holding strong here at Pillars. He's going to get one and actually add a few points of damage. Martango on the other side, too. He's going to do some things for himself. He's going to come around the corner, try and find Dal, too. But he dances him around the box. And Martango, at this point, might be tempted to back off. I mean, Oxford have a smoke, and that's got to go down, indeed. Yeah, so Dal's going to smoke Martango out. But they have to know that the rotates are coming in quickly. And indeed, Glasses there, he's going to opt for a slightly safer plant position. But Harry M is already here. And he could do so much here if he's able to get both of these terror. He knows the Doge is there on the balcony. He's seen the shots coming off, and he's just tr trying to find a glimpse of him. Actually, opts to sneak around the car instead. He's going to get a good spray on glasses, but Doge, he's going to take him down, and that's going to be the first gun round going the way of Oxford. Yeah, there's some very sloppy play from Cambridge. There should be a lot more entry frags. As uh, there should be frags against the entries as they come in. Right now, they're just getting run over and not taking any picks, and it's a very hard retake from Cambridge. I thought Cambridge actually handled the fake there really well because I mean, obviously they had um, Trudeau was over at the B site. He threw a Molotov on there even like you know that's a sure sign of a take. But then Cambridge um, they burst through the smokes onto the A site. Actually, Oxford have gone fast here again as they so love to do. They go steaming down mid. Oxford he's going to find a cover for himself, but there's two nade frags, two touchdown nades, uh, and that's just going to leave Dobby in a one v two. I mean, so, this is a this is a great eco round for Cambridge yeah, a bit regardless. Of and as Dobby, Dobby left, we can see where he'll pull out the bag. And I like the adaptation even here from Cambridge. It's like Oxford's probably going to rush mid because we have no armor, so they're just going to like spam nades down there and you know, throw a load of shots in there and get out with a few kills, which you yeah. absolutely take, especially if Dobby here can make it out with this AK. Dobby finds an AK in glasses. Looks like he's about to get picked off. Um, Dobby... <sighs> Not managing to land any of those shots onto the glasses with only 23 HP, and instead he goes down, and that AK might have been a real asset for the CZs. I think Dobby had a great shot at uh, at least fragging glasses when he planted, but he whiffed the shot and whiffed the next five shots. But you know, so we're only in round six, and now we've got max loss bonus on the side of CTs, and when CTs lose that fourth round, this frequently happens. And now things are going to get tough for Oxford because they're going to be up against quite a lot of Cambridge buys even if they keep blanking them on the scoreboard. And Oxford this time not actually contesting Banana as much, they're just going to sit here by the smoke and wait for things to clear. And that's not going to work out for them as well as it did in the last gun round, because this time Cambridge, they've got four utilities, um, and they're really going to use them, I think, to hold this Banana area. Bob is still over towards A, and maybe that's going to be where they head to eventually, but that's quite a nice volatile through this mate, just to split the defenders. Yeah, Cambridge are playing quite aggressive, pushed up like this in Banana, but I think they're playing it a bit wrong. Uh, what, what would you be doing instead? Um, I think, well, I mean, they're, I think they're playing just generally wrong. Like, they're, they're <laughs> taking a lot of damage from the Molotovs and stuff. They shouldn't really be doing this. Like, Harry M's already half, half health. Um, Cambridge, you know, this, this is the best round they've had so far. They've still not given up any picks. Their control of Banana has been pretty good. Um, um, Oxford's, you know, they have not had to wait this long in the round, really, to work out what they're going to do. And there's only 38, 37 seconds left on the clock, so they're going to have to go for a take here. And it looks like it will be the B-site. Glasses is entry fragging, but he goes down to go for it straight away. Antline, he's there to make the trade. But they don't know there's another CT there, and Harry, he's going to get Antline too. That's traded straight back, but they did their job. They got one or two... Um, 
they got one or two of the terrorists, and that might give Cambridge here a chance on the retake. I think Cambridge have a very good chance of retaking this side. in a sneaky position, and Martango has no idea. And he's going to go down too. And that all of a sudden does put, tilt things a bit more in Ox's favour. Jerry, he's going to catch Dow off there to the side, and that's going to level things back up into a 2v2 here. Dobby, he's going in. He's pulled the trigger, maybe wanting to atone for the last round, but he doesn't know that Oxjevic is still alive, and maybe he doesn't fake the plant out fast enough, and that's going to let him pop out and get the win for his team. Yeah, I think generally we're seeing quite sloppy play from Cambridge here. Just small mistakes here and there, but they add up. Like, I think Dobby didn't realise there was another terrorist still on the site. I think for, for me, that round kind of came down to shots, as in, you know, they... The, see, the, defend, the site defenders did their job, they got the 3 on 3, and maybe if a few duels had gone a different way. Yeah. I think, the other thing is that Cambridge had used all of their utility as well, stalling it out to the 32nd point, so they had nothing left for any retake. So, and then we pretty much returned to exactly the same setup we had last round. So, and we got the same Molotov and Banana. This time, Harry knows he's going to wait behind the, the masonry mortar sandbags, <laughs> and he's pretty safe. Um, behind the protection of the yellow car. I think Dal knows there's a couple of. Ooh, oh, Harry! Gets... Somebody call them back on that. Harry's going to get a headshot on Dal there with the FAMAS through the smoke, and that's unlucky, but hey, it's what Cambridge needed to get back into the game. Yeah, it was a good spray. Um, Firing at the common position of Sandbergs, so I think whoever got the pick did a really good job there. And yeah, I guess you're right. I mean, it's like, it looks a bit lucky, but if you play that position a lot, then you just know where the terrorist heads are roughly going to be, um, and you've got enough ammo on the FAMAS that you don't have to be. You know, it's not like the M4A1S where you can't really spray as much. Yeah, you made a really great play there. But the T's now do look like they're going to set up for another B take, and Oxford certainly, from what I've seen in this map, they absolutely love B. B is where they want to go every round if they can. Um, and Glass is again here, he's going to take the entry fragging roll, uh, that mantle for his team. And this time, that was a, I thought he had the crazy flick there, but it was actually outline that got it. But Gofei, he's going to get Glasses again, and Dobby and Gofei completely wrap up. And in Martango even, already there on the rotates. Yeah, it was a great rotation from the CT side. You could see as soon as the first smoke got, got, um place you could see the cum terrorists rotating from a site so they were there by the time they pushed into B. And I think they're expecting it as well. I mean when the round timer gets like 30, 40 seconds and you've still not heard a whisper towards A, you must be, you know, you have your finger like hovering on the D key being like, right, <laughs> yeah. they're going B. They saw them set up outside A but they knew that a rotation could happen and they were they were very prepared to move. So go for here, this time they're going to smoke the end of Banana and go all the way down aggressively. Um, that kind of leaves Oxford in a bit, left in a bit of a heap in mid, they're not sure what to do about this. Um, yeah, I like this play from Banana. But I mean, they haven't been baited into aggressing through the smoke, which I think probably would have been a bad idea, especially um, as Antline's only got a Tech-9 this round. Yeah, you can see that the, uh, the Oxford team is running low on money, so if they get this round then... Cambridge could have a real shot at getting oh. a few rounds back on the board. They're put onto that e that slight eco, the Tech-9, after just one win by Cambridge. So it shows that maybe the Cambridge, all those picks they've been getting, have actually really counted for something. That the money is so low that they're straight onto a partial eco after losing one round. Yeah, it's good attrition. But look at this, there's possibly a bit of an over-rotation here. We've already got Martango and Gofrey back over towards the B site. But instead, the terrorists look like they're going to creep it towards A. We can see it. We can see them rotate back towards mid. I think they're just looking for pickoffs at this point, but the time's running low. So glasses and Oxford here creeping into apartments, just really trying not to give Cambridge any hints that in fact they've taken the bomb over here. But Jerry in this pit position, he could really come up big here for his team, and that's what's going to have to happen as he gets a bit of Oxford over the smoke. But he's only going to get to get one bullet into him. Glasses jumps down too, and it's quite a long spray. But Jerry, he's able to control it, but he gets traded out by Oxford. Um, Martango already rotates back, but Doge is going to give him a haircut as well, and that's going to get the bomb down. Three on three though, still a flash left as well in the hands of Gofrey. So. This could give them a slight opening to get back into the site. And in fact, Oxford, they've got smokes, they've got a Molotov, and they're just not using any of it to help them in this hold. They're trusting in their fracking, and well, Doge, he shows why. He's going to get Dobby down. And that's just going to leave Gofrey and Harry here to see what they can do in a two versus two for their team. 
Okshevik, he's just using that pillar, that pit position is so strong, but he doesn't know that Harry's on the balcony. But Doge there, he's, that gets so close. Doge is just one shot from going down, but instead he's able to finish his triple kill, and he's now on 15 frags in eight rounds. Yeah, X Doge is really picking up the weight this game. He's he's playing really great and he's getting a lot of frags. You can see him there in pit, really holding that position down. He's gonna have his 30 bomb in what round 16, so like just after the half at this rate. Yeah, he's he's going big this game, I think. <laughs> <laughs> now, what do you do when there's just somebody getting a triple kill every round on the other team? Um. It's a bit demoralizing, really, but <laughs> at the same time, it can be quite good when you get the frag on him. It feels like the round's already yeah. won. And it'll be interesting. Obviously, you can't really avoid a player like that on T side. But when Oxford are on CT side, do you think Cambridge are going to go, right, Doge, he's on B. We're not going B this half. <laughs> um, yeah, that's generally what I like to do. Just avoid the good player when you're taking yeah. sides. <laughs> so... Terrace here are actually going to opt for a timeout, and I think that's probably to do with technical difficulties rather than because of tactics. Um, oh, there's actually a team speak issue with Cambridge. But certainly, looking at this game so far, hoping to avoid the 16 1 from last year. I mean, they've got the 1. <laughs> they need one more round, <laughs> and it's an improvement. Yeah, I think there's some very sloppy play coming from Cambridge. Um, but the last two rounds have looked a lot better. It, it has looked better, but there's still there's still a lot of opportunity sharpen up. They look like they're warming up into the game. They look like they're sussing out what Oxford are doing. Um, you know, they they might be able to come out firing on T sides. I mean, there's still enough rounds left to make this an A7. That's true. But looking at the money at at the moment, yeah. I mean, counter terrorists are quite broke. But at the same time, <laughs> terrorists they have one buy left in them. You don't just the only person here with more than one bias. I mean, they've only got to break, they haven't got to do a lot to break the terrorist economy here. That's true. So what are the adaptations that you're looking for from Cambridge to to try and stall this? I think we just need to be sharpen up, chopping up the uh, the frags as they come into sites. Like that, as you saw that guy in pit with the yeah. uh, the spray on the guy that jumped off balcony. I mean, if he, if he killed that guy in with less bullets, then he can look to take another frag on the people coming into the site, but he only gets one. And your pits are such a tough position to play because of the lack of support that you get there. There's nobody really who can who can trade well for you from there, which I guess is how that position is. Yeah, that's, but that's the payoff for what is such a strong defense position. It's a very yeah, it's a very strong defensive position, and you should be able to hold hold by yourself for a while. So Jerry, he's actually got enough to get himself Kevlar and a helmet, which I guess you're trying to buy down to what like their money what reset didn't it? So probably about. 2000 so might have to double eco this even and it's nice that jerry there because he's got the safety of that kevlar and helmet he's able to snap out mids get a little glimpse of the terrorists um cambridge going for this 4-1 this pistol stack which they did in round three and again they're losing the 50 <laughs> 50 can't buy a break Ooh, oh uh, no wait oxford here they are actually heading into the four man stack and this could get very very gory and especially with Dobby in this super sneaky position, if Dobby can land this headshot, that's almost a guaranteed kill at this range. And that's exactly what he's going. Whoa. He's three for himself. Oh my word, what a play that was from Dobby. That and this time, Oxford roll the dice and they get it wrong. They go for the stack and Dobby, he's ready and waiting with that P250 to rain out some pain. I think that was a great play by Dobby. Great patience. Gets the spray down on all the heads. To see if glasses here hiding in generator can make it out alive. He's going to win for himself to at least trade something back, but I imagine there's a bit of head desking going on in the Oxford player room right now. And yeah, Gofei is easily going to wrap up glasses, so not only did they win the round, but they stole four AK, or three AKs for themselves as well. I think that's I mean, a great round from Cambridge. It resets the money of um, Oxford. They get a lot of AKs on the board, they still have a lot of money. But it's not just about money, it's about the momentum, right? Yeah, it's, it, that must be very demoralizing for Oxford as well. Having such a position like that, five people coming down on B and then suddenly three players just get stopped by one, two, P250. But, you know, I'm sure Dobby on the, on, the, on the bus on the way here was, was talking to the Cambridge boys as well about what happened last year. And when you open out 7-1, you know, it's too easy to feel like that, that might be happening again. But instead when you have... 10 second rounds like that where you spray everyone then all of a sudden I think Cambridge are feeling like well they're not gonna they're not gonna do to us what they did last year yeah 
it's a great hold from Cambridge at round, just sitting behind the smokes and patiently waiting for them to run through the smoke. I mean, we have another we have another EK round coming out from Oxford. I mean, if if Cambridge can bring out eight rounds, then this might not be a disaster. It's interesting to note that neither team has bought an AWP on this map so far. Do you think that that could be an adaptation that comes out now from Oxford, now that they seem to have been sniffed out by Cambridge? Um, yeah, I'm not sure why there's no, no orbs on this map so far. Um, I'd quite like to see one. I mean, it's not the strongest orb map, but I mean, Pit could be a very deadly place to have an orb. You can entry frag really hard with it, like, around archers, those, like, pixel angles that we've all seen Kenny S jump. Yeah, I mean, an orb on banana, an orb on mid, it, it could go a long way. I mean, yeah, that, that banana control as well. I mean, not so effective against a, a team that uses many Molotovs as Oxford do. They absolutely love. Yeah, I'm, but for a sort of passive game like this, the first ten, uh, first eight or so rounds were quite passive. Yeah, and Orp would have done a lot of good. So, I mean, could... Oxford, they're, they're just going to test mids. No armor. Scant eco. I mean, like, that was a fairly throwaway round. But I think rounds like that you can use to, like, just try and get your head back in the game. Because they've clearly worked out Oxford's, like, fast strat, right? It's like, yep. okay, what are we doing now? How are we going to get ourselves back on the momentum, back on the front foot in this game? Because they're still ahead in rounds. And we talked about the AWP coming out, and there's Gofi making it count straight away. And like I said, there's been no AWP, so Outline probably wasn't even thinking that that was a possibility. Yeah, I think I think it's a great decision to get some AWPs. Maybe they didn't have some before because of the money situation. The other thing is, Oxford have been just trucking through mid like all day. They really like using this mid area, and it's not always been clean. There's been a few trades. Go free has been doing some good stuff in that pillar area, as has Dobby. But they've been able to just get through it and get onto the A site as they liked. And all of a sudden, this orb's in the mix. They're going to have to you know, throw smokes. They're going to have to slow play it. And that's just me in the back of their head now for the rest of the game. Um, Oxford doing their standard trick of um, waiting for a minute to see if anyone's going to offer themselves to them as a tribute. Yeah. Um, smokes and Molotovs coming out towards the B site, but it's not going to trigger too much of a rotation from Cambridge because Oxford faked on this in round four. Um, and indeed, they're not going to bite on this time either. You can see, yeah, we can see <laughs> Oxford start to move towards mid. I think that's where they want to make their move. But, I mean, the orb's still holding holding at archers. Yeah, I mean, and essentially what was a fake? They've not really wasted a few nades towards B, but they also lost Antline. They got picked off there. Their IGL and their top, and like one of their, mechanically one of their best players. Um, I'm just, <laughs> that's going to make things harder for them here, getting to the A site, especially at this point. When you're a man down, one-to-one -one trades, they're always going to work out in your favour, but luckily Dal there, he's going to get Jerry too to level the scores, and Jerry really not having too much fun in that pit position. Yep. It'll, it'll be interesting to see how this retake comes out with the AWP. So go for it. He doesn't spot, he doesn't know that Glasses has taken that quite cheeky angle there on the apartment boiler room stairs. And he's going to go down straight away. Martango as well. Doe just going to stick a bullet in his face. And all of a sudden, it's just Harry M, who I think probably is, wants to just get out with this AK-47. Yep, it looks like he's just looking for the exit frags. <laughs> Oxtrovic Spectre of Communism. <laughs> <laughs> He's named his gun. Oh, <laughs> uh, he gets one frag. That's that's big, I think. Yeah, I mean, you always like exits. They're a good way when you lose a round, and especially it must have been a really frustrating round because they even got the pick, but their yeah. their A site defense just melted. <laughs> but getting the exits puts a lot of pressure back onto Oxford. Um, when you lose your guns like that and you're not ahead on money, and yeah, then... it's the economy pressure too. Dal there, complete rebuy, um, and he's only got fifty fifty dollars left and not many nades. Okshevik's got no nades. He's going for his standard pro ninety. Yeah, I mean, if if Cambridge can take this round, then it'll be big with the money situation. So Doge, but... who got fifteen frags in the first nine rounds and hasn't had a has only had one or two since. He's now got the AWP in his hands. Yeah, it can be, it can, it'll be interesting to see what what he does with this AWP. Um, hopefully this might be the um, the key to him starting to frag again because you've noticed that as soon as his frags fall off, that's when Cambridge is going to come back into it. Yeah. And Martango here, he's holding the angle too, but against an orb, this is not a battle he should win, and indeed Doge, he's going to get that for himself too. Yeah, that's a great pick by Doge. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how Dobby wasn't able to even you know tack any shots there. In. 
It looked like he had that angle, maybe, but he must have just been just short of it. Dolly here, he's going to come around the corner, and he's going to get Antlion for his sins. And Ox um, Oxford there just completely caught nothing. Yeah, I think that was a great aggressive push by Dobby. I and mean, Dobby he, he, can, he can he can hear the movement from that position, so he heard um he heard Doge run away, and then he came for a peek. And Oxford as well, you know, you've got to expect that there's there'll be two people holding mid there. There's been a man on pillars every time they've gone A. So how they weren't anticipating that kind of push, you know, they didn't even smoke it. I'm not sure. But it's in here, the, here comes the B take and go free. He had a huge round the last time he tried B, but this time he's going to go straight down to the run and gun of Okshevik. Um Harry M though, he's going to get a cover for himself before Doge finally silences him with the AWP. And that leaves them with a two-man hold with an AWP as well, which is so strong from this, this fountain position. But Doge here, he might get Molotov. That, oh, actually the Molotov just doesn't connect. And that was a really great idea there for him. I think it was Dobby who still had the Molotov. Oxfamic there with a quite a bold peak, um, but he makes it work for him and Doge, well that's a bit overkill isn't it, have 472 points of damage to the head. Uh, he drops his 20 bomb. And he's still got a number of rounds to, mo to, make, the to make the 30. <laughs> I mean if he aces twice then he will make the 30. Yeah, not to detract from that Cambridge have two people that are fragging, Oxford only have one. Yep. Um, I like the aggressive all play though that's coming out. I mean, I think it's one of the best ways to break this very passive play. The problem I mean, is when you're on T side and you have one guy that's fragging, it can it can work for you. Give him the or break up the passive play, as you say. Um, yeah. Well, they, the B side defenders have actually pushed right into Banana, and they get picked off straight away at the start of the round. And Oxford here, returning maybe to their faster strategies. This aggression from Cambridge doesn't pan out in their favour whatsoever. <laughs> no. They take that site very easily. But at the same time, you know, Cambridge, they can't. The passive setups, I mean, A, they're boring for you as a player, and also really stressful as you'd spend that minute thinking, like, <laughs> where are they coming? Yeah, I think I think I would like to see, oh, I would have liked to see Cambridge have more aggressive all play coming around mid and banana, because there haven't been that many peaks down mid. I mean, if you have an AWP down mid, you, you have a lot more map control, whereas at the moment you don't really have that much information. I think the problem is Gofrey seems to be that AWPer, and they want to play the AWP over to mid. He's part of the B-site defence, so when they take him off the, the B-site, then it just seems to imbalance the way they're used to playing. So I think maybe it's stronger for them just to keep Gofrey over there, um, and give it to their secondary AWP, if you know who that is. Oh... And this will be the last round of the half, but at least it's a gun round, pretty much. I mean, Jerry might just have to go for the FAMAS here, indeed, yeah. But Cambridge have most of what they want. They've got plenty of utilities, actually. Two incendiaries, even, which is really going to help them stall out middle banana, if, if that's where they want to go with those. Um, Doge, though, 21 frags. And since he's picked up this AWP, it's, it's kind of brought his game back to life. We see the Negev's come out again. Oh, and I knew Aaron probably would... Um, I w it's kind of disrespectful, or given that you're only 10-4 ahead, and 10-5 is is winnable. It's a winnable half. Yeah. And the problem with the Negev as well, it has to... The damage is okay, but it's still not as good as an AK, and you just can't spray it or aim with it. <laughs> I mean, you have 150 headshots in that gun. I mean, so... if you're going to take the Negev anywhere, it's going to be banana, right? Um, I don't quite know the tactics on where to take a Negev, if I'm honest. <laughs> I mean, what do you mean? It's such an in-meta weapon at the moment. That we've all had loads of experience on. <laughs> so it looks like the mid to B archers take is going to come out here, and Dal actually manhandling this Cambridge defence, but they've taken so many points of damage going in that Cambridge, you know, they just have to breathe on gases and he's down. No, he's only on 56 HP, and all of a sudden that fam ass, which is, you know, disadvantage because it's the lower damage and armour penetration, you know, that disadvantage is wiped out. Jerry can do as much as he likes now. Yeah, we have a lot of damage coming out on this Oxford team. I mean, a site retake is entirely possible. Oh, and Cherry walks straight past the, seat, the, t the terrorist who's hiding on the bomb. And that's just going to leave Gofrey here to try and clutch this last round for his team and give him a good chance heading into the T side. And x Doge only on 16 HP, but he's able to make it with the AWP. Doesn't matter how much HP you've got when your weapon is an overpowered as hell one-shot killing machine. Doge is playing like a bit of a machine this map. And yeah, 24 frag half, and that's pretty huge for him. But we're going onto the CT side now, and it, it's not enough to only have one player who's fragging when you're on CT. 
That's true. How much do you know about the Oxford counter-terrorist side? Are they good on this map? Um, they tend, yeah, tend to have a pretty strong B defense, actually. I mean, it just tends to be a 2B, 3A kind of deal. Um, this is a really unorthodox looking CT strat coming out. They've got four men and they're rushing banana. Antline has even picked up the Julies. I think this may just be disrespect coming out from Oxford. I think it's just an aggressive push because they're ahead on rounds and uh, but it yeah. actually works out for them. They're gonna catch Cambridge completely in the back and they're gonna melt this T stack straight away. And somehow that very unorthodox tactic actually working out for them. And Jerry gets out on one point of HP. And it's the left beef Martango to try and pick up the pieces. And if Cambridge had gone fast A, that round would have gone horribly for Oxford. But instead, they're able to... Cambridge, who are playing with due, um, due diligence towards their opponents, haven't realised that Oxford are expressing no such sentiment and just rush them in the back. Yeah, I think that was a great move by, um, by Oxford. I think, I think it was entirely possible that Cambridge would have rushed B and they had, they had the nade stack ready. And they pushed through and they took um, Cambridge completely by they, surprise down in mid. If they rush B, they've rushed B with 4, Cambridge would have done it with 5. So they would have still ended up in a 4v5 and only one of them had Kevlar. So, like, there were just so few ways that... There were so few positive outcomes to that strategy and somehow they lucked out and got the 1. I mean, you can always you can always pray for the uh, the, th the three-man nade off a nade stack like that. Oh, and Dal here with, a, um, with the Bison. James Bardol's favourite gun, and a load of unarmored terrorists. He's going to say, I will have that bank, please. But go for Martango. They're actually going to do a good job of here of getting a few trades back across. I mean, only only SMGs on the side of I mean, the, S the SMGs are just putting paper in the bank. I mean, you can see oh, just how thriller. rich... You can just see just how rich all the counter-terrorists are. And that is going to force the terrorists even onto the full eco because they didn't get a bomb plant in either of the first two rounds. Which is unfortunate for them, but you know. And that's going to leave Oxford on 14 rounds up unless something kind of tragic happens for Oxford this round. It's looking like it's going to be a hard game for um, Cambridge to bring back at this point. But you know, this is what we were saying last year uh, when they lost Inferno 16 1 and they took the next two maps. Ah, oh, but they didn't have Lil John last uh, this year. Oh, yeah, but the desk has got Lil John. <laughs> the desk has got X more clutching this year. I'll try. I'll try my best to frag a spectator. <laughs> spectator 5K. <laughs> but you know, Cambridge still did get themselves some utility this round, and that is going to let them hang out here for a bit, only losing the one man. I think really what they've got to do is. Just try and stack it up on B, probably gives them the best option with these pistols to get those close range en engages. Yeah, um, it's hard at this point with no no Kevlar against SMGs. I think they just have to try get these picks on B site. But they have so many nades still left on Khan Terra, so I don't see how it's going to work. So as it gets to the point where you think maybe just denying the kill reward would be the best option. Yeah. So, 14 4 for Oxford, probably coming up really soon. What do you say if you're Cambridge's IGL at this point? Um, lose quickly. Let's think about the next map. <laughs> I don't think I don't think there's any lose hope quickly. of. I don't think there's any hope of Cambridge coming back in this map. Lose quickly. <laughs> hey boys, let's lose this game. <laughs> the next few rounds. Got to go, go and get some fresh air and talk about the next game. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I mean, Cambridge could still have some hope with this all. I mean, I think Cambridge have to go down swing. They have to go down with their pride intact because if you if you lose your composure in game one of a of a best of three, it can be quite hard to come back unless the other team um, incite you to do so with outrageous levels of disrespect. And Gofi, he's going to open it up in the way they want. He's going to get the pick on Antelai. And as I said, he did some good things to the AWP last round, uh, last half. Didn't get the AWP for that many rounds, but they give it back to him, and he gets a pick for them straight away. So maybe they need to keep that gun in his hands. I mean, it's a really important pick. Like every pick on Inferno is important because it just spreads you so thin. It just depends how. And Dobby somehow he's going to get down there through the smoke as well. I mean, somehow that, I mean. That's outrageous. That's knowledge of the of the spools, isn't it? Yeah, it's just it's just a spray down there, hoping that the guy's peeking at the same time. Um, but he gets a frag, and that's all that that's all that counts. <laughs> oh, I that. Oh, he's wall hacking clearly. <laughs> Hacks. <laughs> Kick Dobby from the server. Dobby just wants it that bad, I guess. This is the first time I've seen somebody holding boxes on B site with a P90. 
I think it's interesting play from Oxford. <laughs> but there's AKs on the side of the terrorists. Like, if they, you know, they've, they've got, and especially with Kevlar as well, they've got a lot of chances there to make it worth them. Jerry's going to get a pick too. And Oxford actually getting picked apart before a bomb take has even happened. <clears throat> and with a three on one advantage, Oxford just on 22 points of HP, this could be the start of a Cambridge comeback. Yeah. I don't, I don't think Oxford should have gone those two frags, but. It puts it puts money behind on uh, the Cambridge side and it loses that AWP, which is, I think that's quite important. And yeah, Oxjevic actually is going to salvage, um, yeah, going to salvage the AWP even, and that could be quite a big thing for Doge. We saw him have a nice time with the AWP. Certainly, they haven't actually been able to buy one yet this half. But yeah, I'm I'm not sure if we'll get another AWP from Cambridge next round, but there'll be there'll be an AWP on the Oxford side. Could we see that the Russian strat, you know, like the, the all eco, then just the one gun. <laughs> Cambridge, yeah, they've got to try and have a bit of a hunt, but I think Oxjevic is almost definitely safe. So, 14-5, Cambridge, starting to try and find a way back into this game. And 15 kills on Gofree, Harry M and Dobby on 13 and 12 respectively, and it looks like those three players have taken it up on themselves to, to try and lead their team back into this. Doge is just a fragging machine. He's got he 27 has, kills. He's having an absolutely unbelievable game. He's nearly got a. He could get his 30 bomb this round. In 21 rounds. Glasses, actually. He's, his money is so low that he's forced to get himself a swag 7. And that really limits what you can do. He's almost like house to place sandbags now. Yeah, and indeed, I think that's where he's gone. Dal actually came picked off by a nade there straight away. Jerry and Dobby must have double needed that position straight away. Yeah, then... again, like a, I love that playing around the aggression, but this side glasses, he's got the perfect weapon for this situation. He's going to get one for himself and keep dancing him out, and actually, he's going to force the terrorists back and salvage himself that M4. Yeah, that's, an, that's quite a good frag from, um, from Oxford. Gives you a lot of information on what's going on. And glasses had to, had to make that frag as well because he was the only man left on the B site. Yeah, he had great play getting that first pick on Dobby and then he missed the next few shots, but it's the first one that counts. But they have actually forced a rotation out here from here, so now there's only two men on the A site. Um, with that two-man overlap, I think Cambridge have got a really good shot of getting into this site if they all push together. But actually, Antline playing the van position, he's going to get the head of Martango, and that's going to make things here a little bit more difficult for the terrorists. They've still got the man advantage on this site if they should choose to push through for it. Um, but Gofrey is still over towards B, maybe just trying to make sure that they don't get flanked. Actually, the bomb is going to head over towards it. Yeah, I think that's such a strong such a strong position to take from Oxford, having two guys in the pit like that. And Doge, somehow he gets the flick there on Gofrey. I thought he missed it looking at it. Yeah. And he's in position for another one too. Doge, he's now on 29 frags, I think. No, 28. No, he didn't get that one. It looked like he did, though. Oh. <laughs> Glass is just trying to deny the 30 bomb from Doge. <laughs> It's rude. And if only Harry knew how low the HP was on, on the Oxford side. Instead, they're going to go to a tie point here, and they look poised to take map one of this best of three. Yeah, um, it's not looking good for Cambridge at this point. I, the money's quite low. I'm not sure if they're going to be able to take this round. And it's a pretty patchy buy, and there's just a scout and no armor here coming out on go free. Limited utility. There was a decoy from Harry M, which I think he has just left in spawn, which is fair enough because it's such an OP grenade. Uh, only a Galil for Martango and no helmet. And no helmet is big for you on T side. You know, you really do need the ability to survive that first headshot from the M4. Yeah, you definitely need the helmet as um, terrorists, otherwise, the M4 suddenly gets so much stronger. I mean, as, uh, as counter terrorists, you can normally skip out on the helmet when it's later in the game because the AK doesn't care about the helmet, but as terrorists you definitely need it. Um, maybe it would have been better even going for... In fact, he's, he's got two flashbangs, so he could have gone without utility and got that helmet, or gone for a cheaper gun. Yeah, I always always like um, going for a cheaper gun and having nades. I think nades are just so important in this game. Doge there going for a speculative shot into the smoke. But Oxford should be pretty sure what's up here. The rotators don't come out straight away, but Doge with his reposition is probably going to confirm that they're shaped up here. But Cambridge just stalling a little bit even on this take. Yeah, I mean, Cambridge don't have to... I mean, Oxford don't have to play that aggressively at this oh, point. Doge I mean. here from Library almost 
dancing out in front of the door there somehow. And it gives Martango the chance to get the trades with that Galil. And he's going to recover the AK for himself too. And all of a sudden, the orbs out of the rounds. They're nearly on a 30 bomb. Doge, he's out of the round. Yeah, that's... Cambridge have got a shot here. That's a really nice pick on the Orpa. Let's them go to whatever site they want now. And, and here they go to he's B. He's alone on this B site, so all you have to do is kill him, and they've got a free bomb plant for themselves. But the rotates, they're coming in so quickly. They've got to get this frag fast and get the bomb down. And yeah, and that's going to get them onto the site. It's going to stall them even that out there in CT. Yeah, it was a good site um, rotation. Dobby's but... not expecting Dow to be there so quickly, and Dow's going to get Dobby's face for himself. So Cambridge here, they have to win this round to try and salvage the map. That's not going to do it for them either, Antline. And now it's just Harry M here, just to try and store this out for long enough to win the game. He's going to get the first kill for it. He's going to get oh. two as well, but he's just falling short. And that's going to mean Oxford are going to pick up Inferno once again. But this time by 16-5 instead of 16-1. So progress from Cambridge. Progress. We'll see, we'll see what happens in the next maps. You might see me sob out from the casting desk, <laughs> join in the action. John's going to start limbering up. <laughs> so that is going to be Doge there, actually just one kill short. So that kill glasses stole. Yeah. Actually did stop Doge getting the 30 bomb. And maybe this could be the start of discontent in the Oxford ranks. Yeah, so, I mean, you can always you can always be happy with 29 kills rather than 30 though. I think it's a great performance from Doge. I mean, overall... I think the game was perhaps close than the scoreline indicated. I think we saw some good things there from Cambridge, some good adaptations, and they just struggled a lot with their economy, especially on T sides, um, in order to try and get back into that game. So I imagine at this point we are going to take a quick break for a couple of minutes, but you stick right here.